It feels important for me to make this abundantly clear. Especially if you have marginalized identities, you are black or indigenous or a person of color, you're queer, you're trans, you're disabled, you're neurodiverse, you're, you have these different marginalized identities. Your journey abroad may not and probably will not look like what you see mostly on social media and these vlogs and things like that. It's taken me a long time to reckon with that. For the longest time, I tried to fit my experience into what I saw as all these people like easily getting remote positions or easily starting entrepreneurship or easily, and then this is just in regards to finances, getting the visas and the things or whatever. And I had to reckon and recognize that that's not gonna be my experience. I would struggle with those things if I was in the States. And I think it took me coming back to the United States and struggling deeply, trying to find positions and, and jobs where I could be myself, where they were accepting of people in the LGBT community, where they're accepting of black people. And I didn't have to like morph and, and belittle myself and like shapeshift and all these different things. I realized that it's not easy, it's not easy to navigate this world. And while I find a lot more capacity and, and space and energy when I'm abroad, I have to make, like, I, I want it to be evidently clear. It's not always easy. And sometimes it's not easy because there are systems, not only just in this country, in the United States of America, but globally, put in place so that people of certain identities are not able to access things the way other folks that don't have those identities are. Anti-blackness is worldwide. And I know there's someone in the comments that's gonna have to have the conversation like, you're American, you're going to these brown countries. Like, I'm open to having a conversation, but right now, now in this, not in this second. Always open to having that conversation. Maybe not always. I digress. I'm currently in the process of switching the language of my journey, of realizing that my journey hasn't looked like many people. Like what you see and what you hear a lot is like, okay, you want to move abroad, make a two, three year plan, save the money. Once you have the money saved, then figure out where you want to go. Do this, do that, do this. And for some reason, yeah, my my journey kind of fit that, but also. When I first left the United States, I identified as a black woman. I no longer do, I identify as a black trans man. I'm neurodiverse, I've understood now that I'm autistic and I have ADHD and you know all these other things, I'm queer. Um, so my journey is gonna be different. The language that I use to talk about my journey is gonna be different. And I just wanna validate if anyone out there that share any of my identities, whether that's regardless of whatever they are or different ones, your journey may not look the same. You may not be able to save $20,000 before you live to have this perfect blanket. You may not be able to secure this perfect remote job. And there may be times when you go abroad and you have to come back and because you ran out of money or you like, these are things I've had to do. Or you have to do things you don't want to do. And I just want you to know that doesn't make your journey any less valid because we're all trying to get the same thing and I need us to take the classism out of, myself included, I had to take and am taking the classism out of how I saw moving abroad because moving abroad isn't always moving abroad. Moving abroad sometimes is immigrating, sometimes it's migrating, sometimes it's seeking refuge. It can't always be this perfect thing. Sometimes it's people like I have no other choice. Like for me back in 20, what was that, 2022? when there was a big blow up in the place I was living and with my family and I had to quickly make a decision where I was going to go. I didn't have an option to stay in the United States at that time. I didn't have enough money. I had like, what, six, $100,000 to my name. That was enough money to sustain myself in the United States. But what I did know is that I could go to this place and I could afford to get back on my feet and then go from there. And while it's not perfect, no, but that was my reality. So I just want us to be 
intentional and aware that you may be looking at some of these vlogs, some of my vlogs even from the past, and to keep it a buck with you, you may not see the full complexity of your journey. And quite frankly, that's valid because there's so many layers to it, especially when you add different marginalized identities. Securing a to do entrepreneurship when you have ADHD and artistic is not as simple as girl boss your way out of it. Um, getting a remote job when you are trans and sometimes even black and wanting to find a space and a job that feels aligned and actually you feel like connected to and doesn't go against your values and your morals of who you are as a person is difficult and that's a layer that's gonna make it harder. Trying to find a country that you feel safe in, being that there is anti-queerness and, and transphobia and homophobia and anti-blackness all around this world if you're black, queer, and trans, is going to add an extra layer. And a lot of people aren't talking about that. And I hope to continue to have those conversations. If y'all have any questions about that, please let me know. I just want to validate. You may not see the fullness of your experience and what you see. And I just want to say that I don't always either. <laughs> um, which is part of the reason I want to be intentional sharing my journey and my, and my story. But also, that doesn't take away the validity of your move. Just because you can't save up 20000 before you leave doesn't make you irresponsible or unsmart or whatever. It means that you are living within... We need to be more critical of the systems and not how people respond to them. You know, like, that doesn't mean that you did it irresponsibly or wrong. It just means that you were doing your best with what you had at the time. And sometimes that's all you have. Because we're not going to look at someone from another country, like, that is experiencing violence of war or, like, famine or whatever and say, hmm, you know, like, you, you, didn't, you didn't do it this way. Like, you should have set up this Charles Schwab account before you left because then you wouldn't get all the... We're not doing that. And I'm not comparing my experience to someone else, but I'm I'm definitely making us aware and, and adding to the conversation that the experience and the move abroad and the expat and the black suit is not always cut and dry and it's always not pretty, especially when you're black and have other marginalized identities. So I'm not promoting anyone to go out here and... and put themselves in harm's way intentionally. But what I am doing is saying that if your journey isn't cookie cutter, if it doesn't look perfect, if you struggle with money when you're abroad, if you struggle with money before you move abroad, if you struggle with any of these things, it is valid and it is okay. And that doesn't mean that you're not on a good journey. And that doesn't mean that you're, there's something wrong with your journey. And I'm telling this to me and you because it's real. For the longest time, I thought my journey wasn't as valid because I didn't have the money, because I didn't have all these different things that, honestly, looking back at it, a lot of people that were doing it that I was looking at were 20, 30 years older than me. They had all these different experiences, and they had all these different things, and it's just not always going to look the same. So, yeah, all we can do is our best, and I need us to realize that just because someone doesn't have the money or the access or the resources to gather and to cultivate before they move doesn't mean they shouldn't move. Because sometimes the moving is what's going to help you find the resources and the community and the support that you need to keep yourself abroad. And if you have to go back to the States or something, that doesn't mean your journey is any less valid. Because y'all are still with me and I know my journey is still valid. We're still rocking. I love y'all. If you have any questions, leave them down below. This is me. My pronouns are he, him. I'm out here. That was so embarrassing. Cringe. Okay, bye.